Good morning. Um, I did a bit of practice last night. Uh, I started on variation seven, half of it. Uh, I left the second half of it because it gets really difficult. And I thought I'd record actually stumbling my way through it. Um, as I spoke yesterday, I should have started a little bit later in the uh, in the previous variation to see where I had to come from. I decided I have to move up and probably use master or organ, the piccolo and um, bassoon switch, um, for the registration, uh, sound-wise, and also because I don't have the octave of the... Uh, the E flat. I'll quickly show you this what I'm actually looking at at the scores. If you'll excuse me, uh, you can't turn camera on these things, so let me just rotate it like this. This is, if you can see it, Semenov's version, Bassoni's version, and Lips's. So I hope you can see that. I'll check the video later, but if not, I'll just add the score as a, um, a screenshot on the post. Uh, so this variation goes something like this, uh, very slowly. kind of where I practice to leaving the little parts afterwards um, for my instrument I have a few more options because I have the lower D it's just written pedal tones <laughs> So I just do it as written. Here, I'm still not decided if I should play the written octaves or go a little bit lower. I don't know yet. I'll decide later, I think. Um, I think... Yeah, I think the Sony has it so they split between the hands. Um, but I don't think it makes a big difference, just volume-wise, and if I want to keep a lower tone. Um, so let's have a look at this again. Obviously, is this descending? Okay, so that's the kind of effect I want to keep. I don't want to let the bass or the bellows decide something else. I want to really hear that theme come through. few wrong notes. I will practice that slowly and with some exercises, but I think that's the kind of um, sound I want at the moment, at the moment. So that's pretty cool. So the next part afterwards is really very difficult. We have this... Um I'll just put once some violin a little bit higher so you can see what the fingers are doing. So, on piano it's quite a bit difficult. Um, so fingering will be very um, important here. So this first, I th think pretty.
pretty much once I figure out how to play one bar or the other bars because very similar uh, pattern wise obviously the notes are different so I think once I figure out how to play it correctly on one bar it should work for everything so we'll, I'll do it like that so if we have yeah I think five I'm normally thinking of the high um, high voice rather than the lower voice when I'm thinking of fingering okay why that is is because it's a lot easier to follow one finger pattern either the the higher phrase or the lower phrase but it's very difficult to think of uh, both at the same time because the hand doesn't exactly want to function like this but a hand two or three move well, one movement uh, up or down is very easy so we kind of trick the brain not to think of chords because then I'm doing big movements like this and my arm is trying to compensate which is pretty bad um, I'd rather make something simpler if I'm just thinking of 5-4 the movement of my it's very if I think of chords, it's um, it's not on purpose, it's unconscious, but that's how the body seems to work, or mine at least. Okay, and then I'll probably do, the problem here is that we have this B flat octaves, a F and a D and B flat octaves, and I have to have that thumb on the F and D. So how do we get there? Oh, I'll chuck it up an octave once more. Um, so we have this. I think thumb again, thumb, thumb. And I'm searching for the next two. I don't know how to get there just yet. So here we have um, a jump, we have a chord, a G, D and a G, F and a D. So working backwards, I either want the 1 and a 3, or a 1 and a 4, and then a 2 and a 5 for the octave B flats. So I don't know if I want a 1 and a 3 or a 1 and a 4 yet, because I don't know how I'm going to get to there. So I have pretty much an octave with a D, an octave of G with a D in between. And because I'm starting thumb thumb, I have the freedom to choose kind of which notes I want to use. So the trick is how do I get from there to there, to that second position of F and D? Do I want to go to a 1 4? or 1-3. The problem is, if it's a 1-3, the 4 by default has to be extended. So as I'm doing the jump, if I use a 4, I have to keep that 4 extended, so it's a bigger movement. If it's a 3, works. Okay, that could work really well. So using the two to search, leaving space for the four to already done. Okay, that, that works quite well. Let's see if that's... Okay, solution. That's pretty cool. So the fingering was decided by the last two notes. They limited me. That octave on the B flat. Uh, I have to use the second because the next notes come back down. So I couldn't use a thumb because then I had a huge jump. Um, possible, but stressful and difficult to do. So working backwards. Two, five, four makes that five a little bit harder to stretch but it means that I have the two ready and come back for the four. 
because that 4 is being used on the D and then C. So that means I'm rotating that, that movement on the 4th finger, so that's good. Coming back down, we used a 4, so I could use the 3 there and stretch to that 4, and then the thumb thumb. So, so that one worked. So now I will practice by myself to see if the other, that fingering or that way of fingering will work for the other variations.